there's been a prejudice in modern medicine that the only real interventions are the physical ones, ingestion, injection, or incision. But this doctor is pointing toward a powerful therapeutic tool that has underutilized the human brain. Using a technique called self-hypnosis, we can teach people how to powerfully use their brains to control the way their bodies feel and function. What is hypnosis? Well, an example comes from the Sochi Olympics, where unlike here in Davos, there was barely enough snow for them to ski on. They were only allowed to do one practice run. So what the skiers did, this is Bode Miller, was stand next to the course, look up, close their eyes, take a deep breath, and imagine every move, every turn, and it worked extremely well. The team got many medals. The field of hypnosis began with the Viennese physician Franz Anton Mesmer in the 18th century. I have used hypnosis with some 7,000 research subjects and patients and have devoted my career to studying what happens in the brain and how well hypnosis works. Hypnosis is a state of highly focused attention. The skiers at Sochi were just focusing on where they put their skis and how they move their bodies. That means dissociating other things that would ordinarily be in consciousness, fears about competition and competitors, for example. It also involves suggestibility, suspending critical judgment, so you don't judge and evaluate, you just do. We decided that to make hypnosis widely available, we had to understand how it worked in the brain. We studied people who were highly hypnotizable, not everybody is, and found that they had coordination in their brain between their executive control center that plans and does things and a part of the brain that engages in conflict resolution and decision making. In fact, when we hypnotized people in the scanner, we found that we turned down activity in that brain region, which is also part of the pain circuit in the brain. So you spent less time worrying about what you were doing and more time just doing it. There are two other effects in the brain that we see when we hypnotize people. One of those effects involves linking the executive control region to a deep part of the brain called the insula that is involved in brain body control in pain and anxiety perception. So you have better control over your body function and perception. But we disconnected the brain from a part of it that is involved in self-reflection. So you no longer worry about what you're doing, you just do it. We Americans are in a lot of pain, as are people in the rest of the world, as you heard from Beth. One out of three Americans has an opiate prescription. The rate of accidental drug overdoses has tripled since the year 2000. 64,000 people died of it last year, twice the number of people at the peak of the AIDS crisis of car accidents. So it's a terrible problem. By contrast, hypnosis doesn't kill people, it doesn't addict people, but it does reduce pain. This is a randomized trial of patients undergoing medical procedures, the red line at the bottom shows you that the hypnotized patients had one-fifth the pain, they used only half the medication, they ended their procedure 17 minutes earlier than the other patients. But does it last? We did studies with women who have metastatic breast cancer. We taught them to form bonds with one another, face the illness they had to face, and do self-hypnosis for pain. By the end of the year, the green line, they had half the pain that the control group did on the same and very low amounts of medication. The biggest surprise of that study was that after the study we thought had been finished, we followed up on what happened to the patients. And it turned out that the patients taught this self-hypnosis and group support lived 18 months longer than control patients on the same kinds of, of medical treatment for cancer. By four years after all the controls had died, a third of the treatment group were still alive. We're now using a new technique, repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulation, a highly focused magnet, to create the same kinds of activity in the brain that we observed in hypnotized subjects to enhance the hypnotic capacity of people who are less hypnotizable, and we're using it to treat fibromyalgia syndrome. We also teach people to use self-hypnosis to control the lethal urge to smoke. After a single session of self-hypnosis, focusing on respecting and protecting your body rather than fighting the urge to smoke, half the people will stop, half of them will not touch a cigarette in two years. So we get one out of four long-term abstinence from smoking. We wanted to spread this. We wanted to make it available to people who couldn't get to my office. We've programmed an Alexa app. If you say to Alexa, Alexa, hypnosis stops smoking, you'll hear my mellifluous voice saying, for your body, <laughs> smoking's a poison. I need my body to live. I owe my body respect and protection, and it's an interactive program, so I say different things depending on the answers patients give. So modern research has shown us how the brain regulates the body, how it feels, and how it functions. It changes metabolism, it changes pain, as you've heard, and it may even affect survival time. So in health, it isn't just mind over matter, but mind matters.